So, hi there. Hello. And who am I speaking to today? My name is Hatun Tash. I am part of DCCI Ministries, Defend Christ Critic Islam. One of the things we do is we come to speakers corner week after week, mainly to engage with Islamic Dawah team, uh, def by defending Christ, also critiquing ideology of Islam. And today, what will you be speaking about? Uh, today we talked about the stoning um, verses of the adulteries. In Muslim countries, it is something practiced, yet something happened in 7th century. A ship came and then ate the verse. Today, it is not in the Quran. We were challenging the eternal word of Allah. It is not as a complete book. Also, we are talking about the Hajj, uh, why people go to Hajj approximate. Two million people are in Hajj for 10 days and one of the practice, the practice they will be doing is kissing the black stone. It is in a sense committing shirk, yet two million people are following that because Muhammad did something. So we are questioning the shirk in Islam and also we are questioning why to kiss the black stone in uh, Mecca. Okay, you're one of the more famous people of the Speaker's Corner. You're famous for your um, 32 versions of the Quran, yeah? Have you ever experienced violence? As... Uh, I wouldn't say I am famous, uh, but I am regular at Speakers Corner. I am here week after week. Um, yes, one of the research I have done was to look at the claim that Quran is all over the world, is one and only. I put together 32 different Arabic Qurans with thousands of textual variations. Um, as you can understand, that didn't go very well. Yes, there, are, there were the times that um, we were, um, we were, uh, we had harassments. We were, uh, we get death threats or we get pra pra violence has been practiced. But and it does happen, so that's so normal. You know the battle of Yamama. The battle of Yamama. Yeah. It was when most of the Quranists were killed. Yeah. All yeah. those people who had recited the Quran to memory, they're all killed. So, how can you have a Quran when no one remembers it and there's multiple co compilations? So, Islamic tradition tells us around 600, uh, 632 to 634, when people went to the battle of Yamama, who memorized the Quran, they died. It wasn't thousands of people, it was only few of people who died and suddenly Islamic world became a bit conscious because they cannot put the uh, verses into the Quran uh, who memorized they died. So as people died, they took the Quran to themselves. That's where it kind of all idea comes from. It shows us memorization of the Quran is not perfect. It shows us we cannot trust the memorization. And then it shows us that Quran is not perfectly preserved. Because Umar tells us that uh, no one can tell us we've got the whole Quran while we've got only what survived. And a first combination of the Quran, which takes place around 634, it is one of the action called Buddha, which is innovation that Muhammad didn't do it, but Muslims practice it. So uh, it shouldn't be practiced by Muslims, and Muhammad didn't like that much Buddha. And what about the diacritical markings? Oh, it's all mess. <laughs> so when, when you look at the um, one of the earliest Qurans, um, you will see that they have no dots. So all the consonantal letters without dots. Yet in Arabic alphabet, I'll show you some pictures, you cannot recognize the letters if you don't have the dots. Let me just show you the picture if I can find it. I've got three questions to put to you. So this is the Quran. I don't know if you can see. This is the Quran at the time of Muhammad. This is one of the earliest one. You can see it has some dots. Okay. And then you can see there are some insertions into the one of the earliest manuscripts. Okay. I'm gonna show you more examples. Sorry, that's gonna be take any time. No, it's okay. Can I just ask you something? Yes. Right, so Muslims, I think, wasn't the Quran written in classical Arabic? Yeah, I'm gonna show you an example. How, right, so. How was the one of the um, earliest Quran Because are written? All these Muslims in Speaker's Corner, they all say, you know, the Quran can't be translated. So. So, this is another one of the earliest manuscripts. 
if you look at it you will see it has no dots it has no dots without dots you cannot you are not able to read all the consonantal letters for six of the six of them it's all right but rest of it 22 of them you need a dot to identify what is the letter well it's like full stops and commas isn't it yeah you no, know. No, not full stop and comma so uh, in uh, um arabic alphabet arabic letter nun and ya the ta ba they are similar but they just need dot to identify which consonantal letters the dot um, they've got like touch skills they just change the sound and then make the vowels on it. So that's different claim. So, um, Muslims always tell us that we cannot, the, the Quran cannot be translated, that we can never understand the Quran, yeah? So, if we can never understand the Quran, why are all these English-born, English-speaking Muslims, Muslims, if they can't understand the Quran? If it can't be trans translated, so, you know? So, there are lots of problems with, um, we cannot fully understand the Quran. One of the reasons is, first of all, even Allah says in the Quran, Quran is well explained, well detailed, and for whole mankind, if I cannot understand the Quran, the language I speak, then I am afraid I know two languages. I'm Turkish, I can speak English and Turkish, yet Allah is not able to communicate with me. Yeah. It says some things about the character and attributes of Allah. And I am more, much, much better qualified than Allah. How can these Imams communicate to... If I wanted to convert to Islam as an English-speaking person, how could an Imam possibly communicate the Quran to me since it's so untranslatable? So, uh, first of all, if you want to co convert to Islam, please don't do that. I would. Because the don't moment worry. you decided to give up Islam, <laughs> you have to give up your Christian. head. I'm a Christian. So, don't convert to Islam. It is very dangerous ideology. But if you convert to Islam, one of the things Allah is asking you to do it, you need to say the Islamic creed in Arabic with the language you don't understand. And 85% of the Muslim world cannot read and understand the Arabic. It is all about you memorize it and you recite it, it well. And that is not very helpful. Do you it's think, not very um, helpful do you think, you think about your eternity. Do you think Muhammad actually split the moon in two? <laughs> Muhammad made lots of lots of miracles. One of the good things he did was feeding the cat. Sadly, no, he didn't split the moon. I mean, the, That's just, just the... It is in the Quran. Uh, there is lots of in-house debates, but according to Hadith, when he, he split the moon, one side went to east, other side went to west, west, west. But there is nothing anyone tells us because we didn't have the moon fully. We had the water come high. Like we don't have any, what is the, um, gravity has not been affected by it. In somehow 1.84, Billion Muslim thinks Muhammad did that. I mean, even the kind of the, the altic shift, the, the, the tides, the, the, the impact of the moon splitting alone would yes. devastate the earth. Yeah. And I spoke it to a Muslim last gravity. week and she said to me, well, Allah can control that. Oh, well, if Allah can control <laughs> that Muhammad split the moon and Allah can control the gravity, don't you think that Allah should be capable to communicate with mankind his world? the language people can understand and even to protect his word from the ship Allah should do that but he didn't do that so thank you so much for your time That's it was fine. amazing to meet you That's fine thank you sir